Good afternoon and welcome to the 66th annual and second virtual Fairfax County Regional Science and Engineering Fair. I am Brian Mandel. I'm the K-12 Science Coordinator at Fairfax County Public Schools and also the Director of the Fairfax County Regional Science and Engineering Fair. I am joined in hosting today's ceremony by fellow co-director Yara Crane, High School Science Specialist, and Tim Harrison, Special Awards Coordinator and Elementary Science Specialist. Our award ceremony today will begin with a presentation of the organizational awards, followed by the first place category awards, and we'll conclude with the grand prize winners. Now before we begin, I would like to take a moment and thank all of you for being here today, albeit virtually. It's important to these students. I know we've all been tested this year, and the unique impact of this pandemic has required more time, more effort, and more determination from our teachers and parents and caregivers and our students than ever before. In a year when we've all had a front row seat to the complete disruption of the traditional K-12 education model, one thing has remained unchanged, the innovative spirit of our students. They persevered. They overcame obstacles unthinkable 13 months ago. They asked questions, sought out answers, and followed their passions, and it is our mission and it's our responsibility to celebrate their extraordinary efforts. To our students, as much as this award ceremony is about you, you know you had support. So please take a moment right now, and I know some of you are with your parents or care caregivers right now, and let them know how much you appreciate their efforts. I would also like to thank the members of the phenomenal and talented science team for your tire tireless work and dedication in producing this enormous and wonderful event. It takes over a year to plan a regional science fair like this. And this event would not have been the same without the efforts of Linda Peterson, Jill Curry, Lee Bergman, Jim Mathias, Allison Huff, Neva Apshi, and Ursula Peace. Thank you to our Fairfax County leadership for your continued support of our program. This includes principals, school board members, the deputy and assistant superintendents, and our superintendent. Finally, I would like to thank our hosts here at Luther Jackson Middle School and the dedicated FCPS production team for all you have done to ensure our students can be properly and appropriately honored in a safe manner. Now, Mr. Tim Harrison. Thank you, Dr. Mandel. Good afternoon, everyone. I am the Organization Awards Coordinator, and I have the privilege of presenting the Organization Awards. These are awards provided by corporations and professional organizations from around the region that participate in our fair by reviewing projects and awards and awarding students a variety of prizes. While cash is a common prize, the variety includes gift cards, certificates, ribbons, t-shirts, plaques, tours, virtual events, and other items. This week, we had approximately 170 judges representing over 50 different organizations. They gave up their time to see the outstanding work that you, our students, have done. We know that a science fair like this could not happen without the help of so many volunteers. But I am especially proud to be a coordinator of this group of volunteers because these are professional men and women who use science and engineering in their everyday work. They are important because they represent how science and engineering can be an important calling beyond high school and this science fair. They are role models of how science and engineering can be a career. Now, before we recognize some of our organizational award winners, I want to express our sincerest gratitude to Northrop Grumman for over 15 years of support in the Fairfax County Regional Science and Engineering Fair, including t-shirts, for all participants and volunteers each year. With that in mind, we'd like to give Northrop Grumman's representative, Dr. Malika Grayson, computer systems architect, an opportunity to share some thoughts about this year's science and engineering fair. 
Welcome to the Fairfax County Regional Science and Engineering Fair and the congratulations to all the winners. To all the participants, thank you for being fearless and allowing us to see science through your eyes. My name is Dr. Malika Grayson and I am a computer systems architect at Northrop Grumman. As a college student, I remember planning my first science day and seeing excitement of all the young students as they visited the different demonstrations in the room. I knew the excitement because that is exactly how I felt the first time I went to the Science Center in my home country of Trinidad and Tobago. That exposure contributed to my passion in science, technology, engineering, and math, and is a reminder of the importance of STEM education and how it can increase STEM interests, confidence, and help students find their STEM identity like it did mine. As an employee at Northrop Grumman, I have been able to explore the bounds of STEM, from engineering to software development and now IT. At Northrop Grumman, we believe that creating a workforce and workplace that values diversity and inclusion is pivotal to promoting innovation and increasing productivity and profitability. As a pioneering company, we design, develop, build and support some of the world's most advanced products. Whether it's making a 200 ton airplane invisible, predicting cyber attacks before they happen, or solving the mysteries of the universe. Wherever the boundaries of possible are being pushed, Northrop Grumman is there. But we can only do that by using Marie Curie's words and fearing less. By getting rid of fear, we give ourselves the ability to define possible. Thank you very much, Dr. Grayson, for those kind words. And please know, on behalf of the entire Fairfax County Regional Science and Engineering Fair, we appreciate your continued support. Now, we would be here all day if I listed all of the awards. So I will just be giving you a sampling of these awards. All of the awards will be posted on our Science Fair website. The first award is from the American Association of University Women. Their award is a $100 STEM Excellence Award, a Certificate of Merit, and an invitation to a virtual branch event. This award goes to Amna Imran at Marshall High School. The next organization is the American Industrial Hygiene Association, and they have provided two first place awards of $250 cash and certificates of merit. And these go to Si Young Jun from Thomas Jefferson High School and Ashwath Karuna Karam from Westfield High School. The American Society for Microbiology has also awarded two first place awards of $100 Amazon gift card awards. And that is no small award. These go to Indira Nair from McLean High School and Shrija Kikiseti from Chantilly High School. The American Water Works Association has awarded one first place award of $200 cash award and a certificate of merit. And this award is split between the team of Maya Littman and Lauren Dick Pitty from Fairfax High School. Just so you don't think every award starts with A, our next organization is the Virginia Water Environment Association. They have awarded $150 in cash and the Stockholm Junior Water Prize to Lynn Tao from Thomas Jefferson High School. Dominion Energy has a number of first place awards totaling $1,100 and made sure that each winner will receive a $100 Amazon gift card, whether individual or part of a team. These go to the team of Mina Tunley and Nicole Chiban from South Lakes High School and Brielle Steves from Woodson High School. 
The Armed Forces Communication and Electronics Association, or AFSIA, has awarded $8,000 to students at our fair. The first place winners are Karen Shreves from Lake Braddock Secondary School, Nikolay Rozanov from Madison High School, Aditi Chandra Shakar and Vance Kreider from Thomas Jefferson High School, and the team of Samuel Park and Josh Park from Woodson High School. I'm not sure if I'm even supposed to mention the next award, but I will do that. Keep it hush hush. The CIA is inviting 20 students to an award ceremony and museum tour at their Langley facility. Some of the winners are Sun Wu Lee from Thomas Jefferson High School, Helen Sparling from Oakton High School, the team of Mia Kim, Katie Hutchinson, and Lily Puck Karam from Woodson High School, and Anika Karpurapu from Thomas Jefferson High School. I went on that tour a few years back and it was amazing. Unfortunately, I can't tell you any more about it. The Department of Geography and Geoinformation Science at George Mason University has awarded a Tello quadcopter drone and an invitation to present her project at GIS Day in November to Lin Tao from Thomas Jefferson High School. Can you see the stealthy picture in the corner? Now I had a location joke to tell here, but you had to be there. The last sample award is one of the most prestigious awards provided. It is from the law firm of Hunton, Andrews, and Kurth. They are patent attorneys. Their award to Jenny Kai from Langley High School is to complete all of the preparation for a patent application for her alert device to prevent hot car deaths. This process of obtaining a patent can take years, but it is an honor that will be remembered. It reminds me that I just heard the inventor of autocorrect passed away. For those interested, his fun fair will be on monkey. The list of all of the organizations that participated in our event, over 50 groups, will be posted on the Science Fair website. We appreciate this support of our students from all of these professionals. One last reminder to all student winners, please remember to read through your award info and follow all directions to receive your award and thank the organizations for their time and efforts to reward you. You never know whether making this contact will lead to a, an, a mentorship or an internship or some other opportunity. And now I turn over the microphone to our fair director, Ms. Yara Crane. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. In addition to the organizational judges, projects were judged for their merit. In the virtual space, students presented their findings and were interviewed about their scientific and engineering research, innovative ideas, and their ability to communicate their thinking. To accomplish this monumental feat, an additional 140 scientists and engineers joined us yesterday in live virtual interviews with students. Thank you just begins to express our sincere gratitude to you, the experts that our young scientists aspire to become. And now, one of my favorite traditions of the award ceremony. Each year, we choose a theme or inspirational quote from a famous scientist. This tradition takes on additional significance because it was only one year and one week ago in which COVID-19 forced us into our first virtual fair. And yet, here we stand today, changed but enduring, with sharing last year's science fair words from Jane Goodall, which offer a reflection on 2020. 
What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Wow, what portentous words to have set us off into the unknown of a global pandemic. Each and every one of us has been asked to make seemingly impossible choices and compromises over this past year. As individuals, we have come to understand the immediacy of how our choices make a difference in the lives of others around us. And you, our students, the next generation, have decided what kind of difference you want to make. Today, I am proud to honor your work and your accomplishment of something seemingly impossible. You have added a new piece of scientific knowledge to this world. From your bedroom, your garage, your yard, your computer screen. I would be remiss if I did not pause here to take a moment to also honor your teachers. None of us would be here to celebrate your work if not for the choice of a passionate scientist who chose to forgo a path of research and now nobly pursues the path of educating the next generation of students. Your science teacher made a choice to make a difference in the lives of hundreds of science students each year to imbue in you a passion for science, train in you a set of critical thinking skills, and encourage you to communicate your knowledge to the world. And so, with Jane Goodall's appeal to make the right kind of difference ringing in our ears, I transition to this year's quote from another great scientific pioneer, Marie Curie, who stated, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Throughout history, it has been the essence of the human experience to wonder and inquire. Today, we celebrate together and apart due to the dedicated work of lifelong scientists and engineers who strive to understand why and how. Why has COVID-19 been able to spread and how can we stop it? Decades of dreamers and innovators of the past have shared their knowledge of biotechnology so that scientists in 2020 could understand the virus that causes COVID-19 and that we, as a society, may fear less. But pure scientific knowledge alone cannot defeat fear. It is the dedication to collaboration and communication which allows scientific achievements to jump off the pages of a journal. The commitment to truth, integrity, and civic responsibility is what allows society to follow the recommendations of scientists and engineers. Our 300 scientists and engineers came to this fair not to judge you, although we require it, not to instill fear in you, although they do ask challenging questions, but to understand your work and be inspired by you. We may never truly know the impact of you, our students, once you walk out of our high schools. But we can know that by choosing to pursue research now, in this most trying of years, you have made a difference. You have brought more understanding to this world. You have demonstrated what it is to fear less. You have shown us, the adults in your community, that we have less to fear with your generation as the building block of the future. Every article you cited, every hypothesis that you tested, every piece of data that you collected was in pursuit of new understandings that would make the difference you want to see in this world. Channel the words of Jane Goodall and Marie Curie. Share your love of science and go out there and change the world. And now, I have the privilege of announcing this year's first place winners who are eligible to represent Fairfax County at the Virginia State Science and Engineering Fair. While we cannot honor our first place winners in person this year, we are pleased to share their names and the schools they represent. In the category of animal sciences, Mira Gupta, Sanj Katar, Yuva Teja Kacherla from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology and Sean Latif from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. In the category of biochemistry, Gitali Benot and Sana Friedman, Oakton High School, and Sagar Gupta and Sumanth Ratna from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. In the category of biomedical engineering, Benjamin Choi from the Potomac School. In the category of chemistry, 
Kiara Fenn from Fairfax High School, and Kayan Yang from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. In the category of Computational Biology and Bioinformatics, Omkar Kovali from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. In the category of Earth and Environmental Systems, Sophia Willis and Hannah Lee from Lake Braddock High School, and Wendy Liu from Oakton High School. In the category of Energy, Sustainable Materials and Design, Charlie Tatum and Gabriela Turiago Lopez from Oakton High School. In the category of Engineering Mechanics, Karen Shreves from Lake Braddock High School, and Sayoung Jun from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. In the category of Environmental Engineering, Ty Stevens from Oakton High School. In the category of Material Science, Katie Hutchinson, Mia Kim, and Lily Pukkaram from Woodson High School, and Sunwoo Lee from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. In the category of Physics and Astronomy, Aditi Chandrasekhar and Vance Kreider from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, and Amrita Sahu from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. In the category of Plant Sciences, Aditya Somashekar and Divya Somashekar from Madison High School, and Charlotte Sparling from Oakton High School. In the category of system software, Anika Karpurapu from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, and Pravalika Putalapatu from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. And in our final category, Translation Medical Science, Thomas Chia from Chantilly High School, and Ron Nahum from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Congratulations to our first place winners. And now I'm pleased to welcome our Deputy Superintendent for Fairfax County Public Schools, Dr. Francis Ivey. Thank you for the welcome, Ms. Crane, and good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor to be able to join you today for the 66th annual hosting of our Science and Engineering Fair. On behalf of Dr. Brabrand, our superintendent, and the entire leadership team, I offer greetings and congratulations to all of our students, families, FCPS staff, and supporters. Students, you have worked hard to prepare for today's event, and you embody the portrait of a graduate attributes that as an education system, we strive to have every child attain. Science is one of our most important collective endeavors as humanity, and, is, and it is the very thing that will allow our communities to emerge from this difficult year. Sitting amongst us today, we have our next ge great generation of epidemiologists, engineers, environmental scientists, architects, and biochemists. I want to encourage you to continue to dream big, to explore, to create, and to never lose your sense of curiosity about how or why and what happens when. To our thousands of family members who are joining us here today in person and online, thank you for supporting your children and allowing them to pursue their passions under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. To our hundreds of high school science teachers who sponsored projects going above and beyond the essential curriculum and igniting a passion for science in our next generation of leaders, we thank you and we honor you. To our high school administrators, we thank you for your leadership and ongoing support. To our instructional services department and science team, we especially want to thank you for the countless hours of organizing, planning, and support to ensure that this annual event continues. And finally, a special thank you to our partnering organizations and our judges who have invested their time and resources in support of our students and their endeavors. We thank you for your unwavering commitment, especially this year. 
I would like to congratulate again the first prize winners and to all of our students who participated in this year's science fair. And at this time, it is with great honor that I am able to join our team today to recognize, to next recognize the grand prize alternates and grand prize winners. Grand prize winners were selected by the grand prize judges and are eligible to compete at the International Science and Engineering Fair. This is the premier science and engineering fair in the world with over 40 plus countries represented. I want to wish all of our grand prize winners the best of luck at the Virginia and the International Virtual Science Fair competitions this year. And I will now turn the program back over to Dr. Mandel for the awards. Thank you so much, Dr. Ivey, uh, for all of your years of support and commitment. And we will actually not be saying goodbye to Dr. Ivey. She is gonna be here recognizing each student as I read their names aloud from the grand prize alternates and the grand prize winners. And before I call those names, I wanna describe the rigorous selection process that undertook yesterday. All 24 first place winners identified by Mrs. Crane were nominated for the grand prize. That in itself is an incredible achievement. Participants were then asked to take part in another round of interviews by our grand prize judges yesterday. And after some animated deliberations, 10 winning projects were selected as well as six alternate projects. Grand prize winning projects will go on to compete, as Dr. Ivy noted, at the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair, which is also known as ICEF. And if you don't know about ICEF, let me provide just a little bit of context. As Dr. Ivy noted, it is the world's premier science and engineering STEM competition and talent pipeline. Participants come from over 40 countries and there's over $5 million in awards. As an enormous soccer fan who appreciates a good analogy, ICEF is literally the World Cup of science and engineering fairs. ICEF is virtual this year, just like it was last year, and highlights from the 2020 virtual fair include access to the commons, an interactive exhibit booth from several colleges and universities, access to a STEM experiential hall, which contains virtual STEM experiences from museums, organizations, and zoos, and the opportunity to directly engage with STEM experts, including Nobel laureates, CEOs, professors, and above all, the opportunity to interact with other students from around the globe who love a good question. I have no doubt that this year will be equally impressive and we are thrilled that this group will be representing Fairfax County. So with that, I will now announce the six grand prize alternates. These are exceptional projects and students that are being asked by our grand prize judges to attend ISEF if one of our grand prize winners is unable. Students, when your name is called, please come forward to receive your plaque presented by Deputy Superintendent Dr. Ivey. And for those students that are participating virtually, please wave to us from home. So for our first grand prize alternates in person, Sunwoo Lee from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Sunwoo focused on the surface modifications of cellulose acetate films for the application of the face shield. The hydrophobicity of the HMDS modified cellulose acetate film increased dramatically with a measured water contact angle that is similar to commercial synthetic polymers commonly used in face shields. The use of the HMDS modified cellulose acetate for the face shield could reduce the plastic waste problem. Congratulations to you, Sunwoo. The next in person is Karen Shreves from Lake Braddock High School. Karen's project focuses on an engineered kit consisting of augmentations that can be attached to an existing mid-size commercial aircraft to increase its aerodynamic efficiency. This project helps airlines return to flight operations following the global COVID-19 pandemic in an economical and environmentally friendly approach. Helping the global aviation industry recover benefits, the global economy through trade and travel, the global environment through CO2 emissions, and the global society. 
congratulations to you, Karen. Next is Amrita Sahu from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Amrita focused on monitoring space weather from the International Space Station by using a space plasma diagnostic suite, SPADE data. She calibrated the magnometer with the widely used International Geomagnetic Reference Field and they then interpreted impedance probe measurements along the ISS orbit. She used this to analyze solar storms, indicating the potential for predicting geomagnetic activity, which can impact satellite operations, radio signals, and high voltage terrestrial power grids. Congratulations to you, Amrita. And we have a, our team from Woodson High School. This is Katie Hutchinson, Mia Kim, and Lily Puck Karam. Katie, Lily, and Maya focused on the evaluation of different biodegradable materials for the manufacturing of menstrual products. And the results showed that the most cost-effective, consumer-friendly, and biodegradable product to be thermoplastic polyurethane, also known as TPU. The impact of our result, of their result, will prove the capabilities to replace not just period products, but other single-use plastics as well. Congratulations to you, to that team. And now we will transition to the virtual grand prize alternates. For the first is a team from Oakton High School. We have Charlie Tatum and Gabriela Torrego Lopez. Charlie and Gabriela focused on measuring the effect of light frequency on the voltage produced by a magnetic microbial fuel cell. Their data demonstrated that exposing electrogenic bacteria to high frequency light and a static magnetic field yielded greater voltage production. These results contribute to the development of an ideal microbial fuel cell, providing a potential source of sustainable electrical energy. So congratulations to Charlie and Gabriella. And our final grand prize alternate virtual student is Charlotte Sparling from Oakton High School. Charlotte focused on growing Allium fitzesulum, green onions, in a hydroponic system which utilizes less water and therefore is more sustainable than conventional growing methods. Her results concluded that an increased amount of nitrogen results in the best shoot height and total mass growth over a three-week study period compared to increased amounts of phosphorus and potassium. Congratulations to you, Charlotte. And now we will transition to our grand prize winners. For our first grand prize winner is Ron Nahum from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Ron focused on developing an accessible, fast, and accurate system for neurodegenerative disease screening that requires just one standard camera for kinematic analysis of handwriting through use of computer vision algorithms, including a novel recurrent region of interest featuring matching algorithm which achieves sub-millimeter error in position estimation. The collected fine motor kinematic data was then used to train and test an ensemble classifier which achieved a 74% accuracy in distinguishing Parkinson's disease patients from healthy controls, closely rivaling clinical diagnostic accuracy. Congratulations to you, Ron. Next up is um, Kiera Fenn from Fairfax High School. Kiera was inspired by the worldwide struggle to transport refrigerated medication. She focused on identifying an inexpensive, safe chemical reaction using readily available reactants that could reach temperatures low enough to refrigerate medication. After experimenting with two different endothermic reactions, she concluded that a combination of sodium bicarbonate, otherwise known as baking soda, and citric acid solution could remain below the necessary temperature threshold for almost two hours, making it a viable alternative for medicinal cold chains. Congratulations to you, Kara. Next is a team, Sagar Gupta and Sumanth Ratna from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Sagar and Sumanth focused on creating an objective method of protein secondary structure assignment, also known as SSA, using topological information. Their novel computational model is comparable to industry standard algorithms, 
and has powerful applications in protein modeling tasks, including structure-based drug design and homology modeling. So congratulations to the team of Sagar and Sumanth. Congratulations. Next, we have Benjamin Choi from the Potomac School. Benjamin built a novel brain-controlled prosthetic arm controlled via electrocephalography detected neural signals and head gestures. While today's industry-leading neuroprostheses cost in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, Ben's arm demonstrates nearly the exact same dexterity and reliable, reliability and costs less than $300 to produce. Congratulations to you, Benjamin. Next, we have Sean Latif from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Sean's project created a fruit fly model of a traumatic brain injury to understand the underlying cellular and physiological effects with the brain and nervous system, including addiction and sleep disturbances. Also, therapeutic hypothermia was used as a novel intervention to mitigate the deleterious consequences of brain injury. Congratulations to you, Sean. Next, we have the team of Gitale Budnok and Sana Friedman from Oakton High School. Gitale and Sana focused on the ability of bioactive compounds in a reaction with whole milk. It was concluded that A. nodosum extract was the greatest inhibitor out of all three conditions and the control, thus confirming their hypothesis and suggesting that the compounds in brown alga varieties have great potential to manage and prevent high cholesterol. The biomedical potential of algae is overlooked, and this could be a novel and natural treatment for high cholesterol and related metabolic diseases. So congratulations to Gitali and Sanaa. Thank you. And next up, we have Kayan Yang from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Cayenne focused on supercooled liquids, liquids, which are substances that remain liquid below the freezing point. He developed new methods to compute the configura configurational entropy and made progress on an important open problem. By advancing the understanding of supercooled liquids, his research paved the way for the more effective design of their applications in drug delivery and nuclear waste management. So congratulations to you, Cayenne. Next, we have Thomas Chia from Chantilly High School. Thomas focused on locating lesions and conditions within the retina through novel deep neural networks based on object detection and instant image. His project called AI, EYE, achieves a level of accuracy greater than or equal to other modern methods. Congratulations to you, Thomas. And for our final in-person grand prize winner, we have Pravalika Putalapatu from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Pravalika's project aims to recognize surgical actions within live gallbladder removal procedures. She used a variety of machine learning and pattern recognition techniques and improved upon the speed and accuracy of the current model. She hopes her system will be used by surgeons to minimize errors in the operating room. Congratulations to you, Pravalika. And now we will transition to our virtual grand prize winners. And we have one group. We have Aditi Chandra Shakur and Vance Kreider from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Aditi and Vance focused on modeling coronal Faraday, Faraday rotation of linearly polarized radiation from electrogalactic radio sources in order to study the solar magnetic field. They found that model RM decreased, the heliocentric distance increased, and used the model predictions together with reference data to predict observed rotational measure. Solar weather, which includes events such as coronal mass ejections and solar flares, can severely impact Earth's technology through correlation with magnetic field data from the Parker Solar Probe. This research will help improve knowledge and forecasting of these phenomena. So congratulations to Adati and Vance. So this concludes this particular section and congratulations to all of our winners and thank you so much to Dr. Ivy. And now we're gonna have a few words from our school board chair, Dr. Anderson. 
Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Ricardi Anderson, Chair of the Fairfax County School Board and the School Board Representative for the Mason District. On behalf of the School Board, congratulations to all of the grand prize winners. I am honored to recognize these exceptional students, especially in a time when our community is seeking inspiration and hope. Even in our socially distanced and virtual environment, our community find a way to come together to support these gifted young minds. An astonishing number of students, over 5,000, participated in independent research this year. They received tremendous support from their families, finding ways to pursue their passions from home, and hundreds of teachers encourage and sponsored projects above and beyond the essential curriculum. Additionally, hundreds of scientists, engineers, and organizations helped make this all possible by generously donating their time and resources to judge thousands of projects at the regional and school levels and sponsor awards. I am inspired by the way our community has come together once again to celebrate the accomplishments and support the dreams of our students. I am grateful that our students have continued to share their knowledge and passion for science and engineering, even when faced with the many challenges presented by the pandemic. As we look forward to resuming school-related activities in person, I recognize the great resilience and tenacity our students have shown, continuing to submit their work under extraordinary circumstances. Again, congratulations to all of the honorees and the very best of luck at the Virginia and International Virtual Science Fair competitions. Thank you so much, Dr. Anderson, for your timely words and continued support. To all of our students, you will receive an awards packet mailed home and all awards will be posted to the scps.edu science fair website later on this week. This marks the end of our award ceremony and thank you once again for tuning in. We really appreciate you being with us and supporting our budding scientists and engineers. On behalf of the other fair director, Yara Crane, we wanna say stay safe, stay connected and stay informed. Thank you very much. Thank you.